morning. So today I'm going to talk about what has caused men to get to the situation where half of them are sexless. And that's not by choice. Men want to have sex with women. What has happened to them? And there are a number of factors at play. So let's go over them. Uh, in her book, first of all, um, Feminism Against Progress, Mary Harrington points out a few of these things. And one is just a change in the world, which is the knowledge economy. We had uh, feminism in the US and the knowledge economy, whereas in China, we just had the rise of the knowledge economy without the feminism. However, in both cases, the results are the same. Women are out earning men, our women are at parity with men financially, and women have less interest in mating with these men, like the sexless rate is up in both of these countries, and the fertility rate is down. In China, it was the move from the rural areas into the cities with manufacturing. In the US, it was the rise of the knowledge economy. And so it's kind of a worldwide phenomenon. It's not just a US-based thing. And um, we, what we have now is um, at the very top of the economic food chain, we have, we have the elite men, the, the generational wealthy men, the trust fund guys, the guys who grew up and going to private school. And, you know, of course, they all went to the Ivy Leagues and so on. They're running everything small percentage at the very top and then we have a huge underclass of these lonely men who can't get access to women and in the middle class mostly we have a lot of women and we have the knowledge economy but the spaces that once were preserved for men in manufacturing agriculture physical work has kind of gone away through automation largely and somewhat through outsourcing but automation largely and that's why we see the same thing happening in china so between the knowledge economy and feminism, men have been displaced and they haven't been able to find their way back. But another problem that she points out in the book is that we have lost the men only spaces. It used, uh, whether it's in uh, places like, let's say, you know, the Elks Lodge or places like the military, women have infiltrated these spaces and said, you're a sexist for not allowing us in. You must let us in. And I just Googled it. The Elks Lodge was forced to admit women in 1980-something or 1990-something, or they would be threatened with losing their liquor license. So they had to admit women. This is a huge mistake. Men thrive by having their own spaces, and we women need to stay the fuck away from them and let them be men in their own spaces. Why do we have to meddle in their in their spaces it's very controlling i'm not threatened by men having their own spaces i'm all for it women should not be in the military in my opinion they are given it they're giving an unfair advantage they don't have to do as much work they're given favorable favorable um uh, they don't have to they're they're given special favors okay um, we need to have a return to male only spaces in her book uh, she doesn't say that, but I'm saying that. But she kind of alludes to that. And um, in her book, she also talks about a group that I looked up. It's called F3 Nation. F as in Frank, three, the digit three, nation, as um, a men's group. It's it's free. I, I think it's free. And you can go and work out with these men. And I just looked it up. They have a lot of chapters here in um, in, in Southern California also where guys go and do 5.30 a.m. boot camps at the beach. Now, that's manly stuff. That's like, I want to go by these boot camps. Any guy who's at a 5.30 a.m. boot camp in the cold doing boot camp is hot to me. So uh, that's men only. But, you know, if some ladies happen to be walking by when they're done working out, getting a little bit of a look, you know, because I crave to see masculine men. I want to see, I am in support of women saying we love masculine men. We want to see them work. We want to see them sweat. We want to hear them grunt. We want to have them be just loving their masculinity, loving their strength, loving their power, loving their aggression, and loving their aggression in a positive way. So, 
But I want to read uh, some of the comments that you left on the video I made. And I'll pin that up here about the, um, the rise in um, lonely single men. The video is called Half of Men Are Not Viable Mates. And I said that because, as that video will show you, we have data from Pew Research that shows that one third of men under the age of 30 have not had sex in the past year. So it was 8% in 2008 and it was 28% in 2018. And that number could well be higher now. That 28% of men, 18 to 30, have not had sex in the past year. And do you think they're doing that by choice? No, women don't want them. Furthermore, 50% of men do not want a relationship. And by relationship, Chris Williamson in his interview explained any kind of interaction with women, including sex. They don't even want it. They've given up. Now, before I read the comments, I will add one of my own which is that a lot of men have been radicalized by online content. Like I'm making content right now. I may be influencing people, but don't forget that people are very easily influenced. Remember what happened during COVID? We had um, a respiratory infection that had a death rate of under 1%. And the death rate we did have was almost entirely concentrated in people with obesity and underlying metabolic disorder and having a huge comorbidity, huge health issues, huge health issues. That's why the U.S. had a very high, higher death rate than other countries because we're fat. 70% of Americans are fat or overweight. And um, so instead of teaching us why this was happening or how we should eat better, they instituted a totalitarian lockdown and people fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I'm still pissed off about it. I did not participate in the lockdown. I kept working out with trainers that would work with me. I didn't get any of the COVID vaccines. And when I made a video about it, they gave me a strike on YouTube and I was muzzled. So what I wanted to say here was that a lot of people are so easily influenced. The same thing with climate change. Um, I was just listening to a scientist on Tucker Carlson explain how <laughs> he's a physicist and he was saying, uh, well, how did they convince people that CO2, which is life and en life energy, like that's what plants need to thrive. The more, the better. They convinced everyone that CO2 is bad. And also the climate graphs, as I know from before, the, the charts are very inaccurate because in a city you have a heat sink due to more asphalt and um, so you, the um, temperature stations in, in a city are going to read higher temperatures than in rural areas. So if you just test the rural areas that climate the temperature is not changing How, and that we have had climate change throughout history. Greenland was once green. England was once we once in England you were able to grow grapes. And I remember in the 70s, they were warning about the coming ice age. So at one time, the earth was much warmer than it is now because Greenland was green. Then we had an ice age. The earth got colder. Then it got warmer again. This was long before uh, humans were civilized and um, interacting much with the earth. Okay, and this is attributed to the sunspots because the earth moves around the sun, it changes the axis, the sun has sunspots, and depending on how close we are to the sun and the sunspots, it changes the temperature on earth. But these um, propagandists are convincing you about climate change because they want to control uh, your, your, your lifestyle while they themselves keep using big jets and people don't question it. Another thing people don't question is these endless wars. And I'm glad that Tucker Carlson is interviewing Vladimir Putin because Vladimir Putin had every right to invade Russia because the, uh, Ukraine, because when Russia moved out, I'm, I'm digressing because people are so fucking stupid. You know, it pisses me off when, when, um, I'm from West Germany. When, um, when the wall came down in East Germany, I was so impressed because 
what country succeeds its power and withdraws. But they made an agreement, and Henry Kissinger promised Vladimir Putin, or uh, not Vladimir, it was the other one in charge, um, his predecessor, uh, that we will not expand NATO past Germany. We will not expand NATO past Germany. That was part of the agreement. And ever since then, the U.S. has been expanding NATO further and further to Russia. And Russia said, do not go into Ukraine. We need a neutral borders around us. And the U.S., and with all its military stuff, started getting closer and closer to Russia. And after years of this, Russia finally invaded. And they're not trying to take over Europe. It's bullshit. They just wanted back that part of Ukraine that's Russia and a neutral Ukraine. But the U.S. will not agree to a neutral Ukraine. They want to have their wars everywhere. And these brainwashed Americans who think the U.S. can only do right actually believe that Russia wants to take over the world. It's so much bullshit. The only people taking over the world in wars, endless wars, are the U.S. And thank God to YouTube that we have independent creators like I, you know, we can talk about this. Uh, we're no longer just blinded by the media, but people are brainwashed by what the media tells them. People are easily brainwashed. People join cults. And people believe what they hear on the Internet. So you have these young men that are somehow in a very vulnerable stage of their life for whatever reason, and they go on some Internet or some gaming platforms, and they start hearing men talk about how women are bad uh, you should never trust a woman, women owe you sex, and all this stuff. And they become radicalized because they don't think for themselves. And I, we are not teaching people to think for themselves because school is all a bunch of fucking brainwashing. I happen to have be a little bit more questioning of things, I think because I moved countries when I was nine years old from Germany, from Deutschland, uh, ich bin aus Deutschland, uh, to the U.S. And that made me kind of see, you know, like, the differences, you know, it exposed me to different ideas. And also because I wasn't raised with religion, I was, I have a little bit more freedom of thought and questioning things. And um, school is a lot about indoctrination. You're not allowed to question. You're not allowed to think or analyze. It's mostly indoctrination. Read this and repeat this on the test. It's mostly about memorizing and repeating facts that the teacher tries to tell you. And we're not encouraged to think for ourselves. And people, you know, um, were just really brainwashed by the media. And that was really all we had access to were the, was, were the newspapers, the TV stations. And now people have more freedom of thought. But not in the schools. They're very brainwashed. And they have to pledge allegiance to the flag when the country is no longer even giving a shit about the people. It's all about the rich people in power and the lobbyists you know, trying to get more and more money and more and more power. They don't really care about the people anymore. So I think that when these, you know, what does our country stand for? We used to stand for freedom or, you know, some kind of an idea. And now people are super lost. Men don't have their own spaces anymore. There's a rise um, um, in telling men that their masculinity is bad. And people who are easily influenced believe this. And that's why when we had the lockdown, the biggest, the, I, you know who was pissed at during the lockdown besides asshole Newsom? I hate him. All the men who stood down and took that shit up their ass. All you guys who stood down and didn't complain during the lockdown when you're supposed to protect and you let your children stay home, you let your children wear masks at school. And then when I went into the Starbucks, when masks were finally optional, and I went in there without a mask and all these guys were standing in line at Starbucks with their fucking masks on. I was so pissed at these weak ass, wimpy, simpy losers of men because men need to be strong and they're not. This is the, a huge fucking problem because they're brainwashed. That's why I was very much interested in the truckers in Canada. Those were real men. And they looked like men. They were, they were strong. They wore flannel shirts. They had big trucks. They had beards. And I'm like, I want one of these guys. Okay. And now we have guys at the southern border doing the same thing. Using their strength and their masculinity to stand for something. To provide and protect. Now, something has happened in our society where men are no longer willing to stand for something. Is it the, some people say it's um, 
the plastics in our food, um, something in the water, that men are losing their testosterone and their sperm is less um, fertile. Um, you know, that it's an environmental factors. Other people point, like uh, one of the comments here was this woman pointed to the rise of, um, the rise of uh, fatherless homes. So let's start with that as another reason. I have to find her comment. Um, actually, I'm going to go in order now of what people have left in the comments as other reasons. Um, of course, I, one of the other reasons is that fewer men have the emotional stability. They're not as interested in personal development. Uh, Scott Bridge says, emotional stability is much harder to achieve than financial stability. It takes way more hard work and time to develop the soft skills needed to effective emotional management and regulation. And I would say that when I look at my own family and my own parenting, that healthy parents instill this already in their children. But if it hasn't been, these men definitely need to get to therapy. Although I do think that therapy is becoming more accepted now for men. And someone is asking, what do you mean by emotionally stable? because women's emotions all over the place. Uh, not really. I don't think so. Um, but this other gentleman is saying men who are calm and competent, especially in the face of a crisis, men who don't get angry and violent, men who don't take things personally or have a chip on their shoulder. And I'm going to give him a 100% because I totally agree with that. This It's one thing to have feelings and emotions that come over you, but it's not okay to just, men need to be calm. But let's go back to some of these other comments. Okay, here's another theory about what has happened. Uh, conspiracy says, I see a lot of other responses touch upon various things. Here's one I haven't seen. The result from single mother households. A look at your percentage of 50%, and that means 50% of men who've given up on having any kind of relationships with women, including sexual. And I think, what else is around that percentage point? Single mothers or divorced households where the father isn't the primary caregiver for their sons. I think these boys have now grown into men under primarily the influence of their single mothers and they watch them provide, keep house, basically play both father and mother roles. They not only now have this expectation that women should be both providing for the home and keeping the home, they're often coddled and showered on by their mothers due to the guilt they feel of not being around. So these types of men, they expect their women to provide for the home. They expect them to keep the home, cook, clean, errands, everything, and they also expect them to shower them with attention, praise, presence, basically dote on them as their mothers would. And that hits it right there, their mothers. These men, like many others, are looking to replace their mothers in their lives. That's why they get angry if you deny them, angry if you're not providing, quick to put women down and insult them. I imagine the same way they treated their mother when they had a temper tantrum. They can curse their mother up and down and their mother still loves them, hugs them, and provides for them. I feel bad for them truly. It takes a lot of therapy to suss out childhood stuff and that isn't cheap. They usually don't see the benefit of spending money to fix themselves as far as finding a mate because they're never the problem, right? And she does make a good point because I know from talking with men that the guys who are raised by single mothers, they're usually the people pleasers. They're either, the ones I see are usually more like the people pleasers or I will deny my sexuality because I heard mom say men just want sex for me or don't be like your dad. So they repress their masculinity and their sexuality. But then she's talking about the men who were coddled by mom and are super entitled. And they think that, well, women, mom gave love me unconditionally just for existing. 
Why don't these women love me unconditionally for existing? They never saw that a man has to develop, has to develop as a man to be wanted. He has to have some strength, some courage, and develop his own innateness of being a man in order for women to want him. Then they get super angry because they've never been told no. And yeah, these caught little, um, and you find that especially in Indian men and Middle Eastern men, they are all raised that way. Now, some of the replies uh, are not really happy with her. Um, Ken of Ken says, no, don't lay the toxic insult thing on single moms. They get blamed for all the shit in this society that people don't want to take their own responsibility for. I grew up that way. My mom shouldn't, didn't dote on, her, on, on our every whim. But Ken, she is making the point that it's these men that were doted on by single moms that would be the problem. But he's saying not all single moms dote on their sons. His mom went back to work and she didn't tolerate any nonsense. So he's saying that um, a lot of single moms don't have time to dote on their sons. They're busy working and they have good boundaries. And then she says, conspiracy says, well, where was your dad? I'm sure your mother would be super proud of you defending her like that, Ken. What does your father think? Where is he? Did your mother teach you about men or did he? Did another man teach you about men? Who was raising you while she was working, making her way back into the workforce? That takes a lot of work and time away from the kids. I'd urge you to look into the statistics in regards to children from single parent household. You cannot possibly think these single mothers raised up men that understood what their roles are. I understand your urge to protect her, I do. I come from a single parent household as well. I do consider, I do think it's important to look at it from a standpoint of logic removed from emotion and consider if this arrangement contributed to the current state of men find themselves in. You can't just cast it out because you have a strong emotional desire to protect your mother. Everyone listening to this, most of people have a strong emotional desire to protect their mother and protect their father. So I am going to give you some straight in the face homework on this video, which is to make a list of all the positive attributes of your mother or your father that you feel close to and that you want to protect. And then to individuate yourself, make a list of all the negative traits and all the things they didn't give you. And very few of you will be willing to do that because in your mind you have put your parent on a pedestal who has done no wrong. But I, 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 I hear what she's saying because we do not know if, um, let's, see if, let's see if Ken replies to this. And I don't want to pick on Ken, but we're trying to get to the issue of did he have a father and what... Um, conspiracy is saying it's the lack of having a father in the home in addition to you know the moms calling their sons and he's saying that um, he's not answering the question about that he just said that as far as learning the role of men he had a lot of influences but ultimately had to work that out from himself it's just as well I didn't only get input from my dad or his generation. There's a lot of bad role modeling these days. I did not hear him say anything about his father, and that's the problem. The problem is, um, uh, I'm going to add to this conversation, and I want to thank Conspiracy and Ken of Ken for having like this very helpful discussion, very respectfully and disagreeing. No one was putting anyone down. Like I, I adore both of these people. Um, for having like this really great discussion. And um, what we hear here is maybe it's not that the fact that these uh, moms call it their sons, it's more like, where was your dad? It's the lack of having a dad. Now, a lot of men who grew up in homes with an abusive father will turn out to be these people pleasers. So these men will be able to get women actually but they're really not attractive either. So, you know, I mean, we all have to work out our parenting stuff, right? Um, and I told Conspiracy I was going to make a video about her comment, and she said, good luck. Anytime I have ever fleshed out this idea in a public forum, 
I have always had a lot of very angry, protective men come out of the works, their mother speaking through them. Okay. Um, Scott Bonata says, I'd love for you to have an open discussion with the Better Bachelor, and you guys could promote this, as you know something between your guys' two channels, but that'll never happen. And I know who that guy is, the Better Bachelor. I think he's that gentleman, not a bad-looking guy at all, who makes videos in his RV, who's building a new RV or building a house or something. And um, Sam Stone replies, from my limited observation, Better Bachelor spends a great deal of time and energy finding fault with broken females. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's always talking about another broken female he found. Instead of spending that time mentoring and building up men's health and well-being and productive skills. Exactly. Now, I also hear from men who are saying, we don't want to step up. We do not want to step up to what these women want because the the goalpost for women has become so high that fewer men feel like they're able to economically reach that uh, or they feel like really discouraged by what is expected from them. Um, so Wallace Atone says, personally, if a woman is unwilling to go at least 30% from her starting position, then I won't lift a finger for her. An increasing number of men feel the same. Life is very pressing and I don't have the time, money, or will to mold my life to meet the expectations of the modern women of the West. And he's one of these left out guys because he's one of these guys that have given up. So thank you for leaving your comments. I do want to hear from guys who have given up and why you've given up. And apparently um, they're saying I, 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 I cannot meet the demands of what I see the modern woman wants. Uh, another gentleman is saying, um, Damian Jackson, he's saying that he likes women being independent and bettering themselves, but he says that um, uh, what people don't usually talk about is that these educated women have a huge student loan debt. He's a planned worker who made just under 60K, and while a college-educated woman his age might make more money and won't want to date him, he has, he has a house and no debts, and she has a lot of debt. To which I told him that he sounds like a good catch. He has a good job. He has. He did say he has career aspirations. He has a mortgage and he understands women. So I would think that women are attracted to him. Like this might um, uh, feed back to him. Someone else is asking me about sex robots as a, a alternative for these men. And uh, Bobby Rock says, what are your thoughts on the upcoming sex robots, a miracle of technology? And Shira Khan says, I'm sure you'll be the first to use those. You sound like you're in dire need of them. I think he was joking, kind of ribbing him a little bit. Uh, so I do think that these sex robots are going to be for these men who are the not viable. And that could be a good solution because we do not need a world of men who have nothing. So if these men have a sex robot, that could be better for, than them having nothing at all. Because it's very dangerous when these men are, we have so many angry, sexless men. I think being sexless is worse for men than for women. I mean, we love good sex. I crave good sex. I, I would love... I would love to be in a relationship and have really good with someone that I'm in love with that have really good sex. That is my number one dream that I would love. My number one dream, if you would ask me, Sharzad, what is one thing that you want that you don't have? It wouldn't be money. It wouldn't be a bigger house. It wouldn't be anything. It would be to have a relationship with a man, a masculine man, and have really good sex. Um, and... You cannot, uh, but, but I don't, I don't need that. My life is not like, I'm not depressed because of it. Although maybe a lot of women are depressed because of it. Maybe that's why so many women are on um, antidepressants, but men really need sex. And, but I do not think that these dolls will ever replace the need for bonding and real human touch. A doll cannot replace that. A doll cannot replace that. The same way that me talking on a video cannot replace anything that we would talk in real life or the human touch. Because if the 
if a dog could replace human touch, then we wouldn't even need mothers. Remember, then we could just have, uh, under that theory, you could just have like baby monkeys be on these like fake monkeys that just hold them and talk to them. I doubt it would be the same. There's more to people than just our bodies. There's our energy, our vitality, the spiritual aliveness part. I do not think that can be replicated with a doll. And also you have to clean out. You, you, once you ejaculate inside that doll, you got to clean that out. <laughs> you got to clean that out. But it might be something that some people want. Shara Khan says, a woman is mother na nature herself. She favors the strong and despises the weak. When women are free to exercise this will of theirs, it weeds out the losers from the winners. And that is exactly the point of video I made. But I, I am saying that there are more men that could be moved to the winning side. Not all men. I think maybe we could move like a third or half of these men who are on the loser side into the winner side. Okay. And there are forces that have kept them, put them into the loser side. And if we can identify these forces, we can move them over. Scott Galloway talks about um, having men learn trades, that they need to learn trades. Um, I think that if we had some policies that would uh, encourage men to pursue the trades, I think if we got rid of all the wokeness and movies and so on, that is just teaching men to be feminized and that's giving advantage to people who can't compete. We should go back to people competing on their merits and, and colleges should be places where people can have free thought. We should be able to have men who are for guns and for hunting represented in colleges equally as all these woke activists. I think that higher education has become these government all inclusionary policies have become um, very repulsive to men. They don't even want to participate in that. And a lot of men don't want to take on the debt to go to a trade school. And some of them are just frankly too lazy. Okay, so someone else is saying that women have to lower their expectations because the one income household is gone. I agree with that. And he says that... Um, Many women put a lot of men down, not because they earn less, but simply because of their blue collar work, like plumbers, sewer workers, and so on. But 1949 Coop says, I think in the long run, men will still make more money because they take on more risk, work earned demanding or physical jobs that are becoming uh, well paid. The knowledge economy peaked, and there will be a lot of white collar jobs in impacted by outsourcing technology and AI. Meanwhile, I see contractors asking $25,000 for a bathroom renovation booked six months out. Need an HVAC tech or plumber? Good luck. That's absolutely true. A lot of women are going to be losing these jobs due to AI. It's already happening. The layoffs are happening not at Amazon, not in the delivery drivers, but in the jobs that they can have AI do, automation. And furthermore, it is the, the guys I know who work construction, they make a shit ton of money. Uh, and I'm in California where there are a lot of regulations. They make good money, these guys in construction. And um, that is a place where men still excel. And I will tell you, any man who takes risks, any man who works a physical job, he's going to be in shape. And taking risks uses your masculine energy, getting up early, being disciplined. These men are on high demand. Women will check them out. I, I would date someone who is a, a construction worker or a plumber. Absolutely. That is a masculine man. It, it's not just about the money that women want. They want a masculine man. Uh, so the, uh, there is another comment that I wanted to read about government intervention, which I can't find now. But someone left the comment that government intervention is the reason that women are not out out earning men. I would like to find that comment. Here we go. I'm thinking 9760. Female empowerment has been pushed since the 60s. It is artificially created and supported by global government and global corporations. If all the governments and corporations were not supporting feminism, it will fall apart. 
education as a propaganda mill and the government and corporations create a bigger tax base and double the workforce and consumer market with two households versus a single household family unit. Women want to date up, but that means men would be dating down. Women only have an advantage because of laws and corporate policies, not because women have a natural advantage. Any man who has been through family court will see how skewed the laws are against them and have to pay dearly for a relationship that no longer exists. He sounds like he's spouting some red pill stuff that isn't true. Um, he is also talking about that government ha feminism has um, given women more power, but in China that's not the case. And a lot of men have lost their jobs in manufacturing and agriculture, not because of feminism, but because of automation and outsourcing. Um, so... I do agree that education is a propaganda mill, but we cannot just lay this at the hands of the government because the government doesn't really give a shit about women either. The government just cares about keeping the rich richer and giving us the illusion that it's men against women. When the reality is, you guys wake up, the reality is that we have the global elites, in my opinion, who are the ones... They have the lobbyists. They have the ear of the politicians. They have the money and the power. And it's always been that way. To lead the discourse, to make the laws, to influence uh, the socioeconomic, the, the, the demographics, whether it was the priests in the Roman Empire, the warlords, the warlo warlords, the dictators, the kings, they've always been in power. They're still in power now. We just have the illusion of democracy. And they kind of pit us against each other. But the reality is what we really need to do is band together, is let women be women, let men be men, and realize that the people that are, you know, in charge, um, they're the ones that are still, still thriving. I do not think that women being more educated is bringing us down. We need educated women because educated women make educated children. There's no way of going back. You cannot stuff feminism in the bottle. Now, he says that women do not have a natural advantage. We do not have a natural advantage in fighting, but we do have a natural advantage in forming uh cooperation, in family formation, and in sex. Women are still the choosers of sex. And when you say natural advantage, are you talking about fighting? We, we're not stronger than you guys physically. We're not. We have other advantages. I do not, I do not think that women have a natural advantage in fighting and in strength. That's why I think women shouldn't be in the military. Women shouldn't be firefighters, and I don't think women should be police officers. I think this should be reserved for men. But I think women have a natural advantage in other jobs. But I don't know. Uh, this could be a topic we could discuss. But um, maybe it's because women don't have a natural physical advantage that we want masculine men. And I really, really would like to see a world of more masculine men. I want to see more guys like, don't, stop shaving your pubic hair, guys. Why the fuck are you shaving your pubic hair? Why are you shaving your pubic hair? You know, why are you letting anyone tell you to wear a mask? You know, that's your masculine strength. And I want some men to start stepping up and leading us. Uh, Fauci, Trump, Biden, you know, they're all like masks, stay indoors, lockdown, Newsom. These were all men telling us to try to invoke fear in us instead of leading us. Fortunately, there are a lot of good men leading us. They're speaking about the, the truth in science, the truth in research, because the elites and the big pharma, they have infiltrated all of the sciences. Um, Tucker Carlton had on this doctor the other day who he and his sister uh, have come out with a book I pre-ordered, Good Energy. And he used to be on the, uh, a consultant to Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola uh, donates money to the NAACP, uh, the 
civil rights group. And the civil rights group is now a registered lobbyist for, is it Coca-Cola or the sugar industry? Like it's all been, you know, your scientific funding is dependent on towing the line with big pharma. They fund most of the studies. So what we thought was independent are civil rights groups, or regulators, or scientific institutions are co-opted by big pharma. They're no longer uh, sp speaking the truth. Hmm. I could just go on and on, but that's just corruption, you know. We need some good men like the truckers in Canada um, to be like, or even men in their own lives, leading other men, promoting truth, promoting strength and aggression from their hearts. Um, we need masculinity. We need more viable men. That's what we need. And I crave it. I love a guy with a beard, with some pubic hair trimmed perhaps, whose cock works, who is uh, passionate about his life, who um, has interesting stuff going on. Like, I would love to meet someone like that. Where are these guys? I am in feminized California. Feminized. Actually, there are a lot of good men too, but they're all, they're married. But this, this push towards feminizing men is very bad. That's why women don't want to date. And they, these bitchy women, they just need to be, um, you know, I think that if we had more men step into their leadership role, these bitchy women that you see on TikTok would be calmed down. They just need a good fucking from a man who loves them, you know, in a relationship. That's what they need to calm down their... You know, because they're all over the place because they're like lost too. Um, so when I started making this video, I had the intention of giving all the reasons and then making like ch chapters for it. But I'm not. It's just kind of like a free flow. I'm kind of all over the place. And the video was really long. There were a lot of tangents. But please forgive me. This is like... Um, you know, a video I've been wanting to make in response. So, um, anyway, I have to go get ready. I have to go get my hair done. Have a good day, you guys.